for joining our, our Raja Ampat webinar. My name is Scott Geitler, the owner of Blue Water Travel and Blue Water Photo and the Underwater Photography Guide. And with me is Mark Strickland. Hi, everyone. And uh, Vijay Raman. Hello. Um, Mark, is, uh, uh, we've all been to Raja Ampat, uh, although um, very few of us as many times as Mark, who's led many fantastic voyages in Raja Ampat. So we're all very, very excited to... Uh, to do this, um, to do this, this webinar, and uh, it's 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 going to be a lot of fun. So, let's get started, everyone. And thanks a lot for uh, for joining us. Um, we're going to uh, we have uh, we've already had quite a few webinars that are all online, uh, recorded for people to watch, like Fiji and French Polynesia and Cozumel. Uh, we have Solomon Islands coming up in, in a few weeks, and Adam promises tomorrow to be putting up quite a few more webinars on the schedule tomorrow. Right, Adam? Okay, so we'll be adding many more many more webinars to our schedules tomorrow. Um, I just saw a hi from Marilyn from Puerto Rico. Hi, Marilyn. Um, uh, just a real quick intro to the Blue Water family. Uh, the Blue Water family consists of Blue Water photo uh which where we all we all work uh blue water travel uh, your choice for underwater travel for dive travel and the underwater photography guide um the uh blue water travel let me back up here uh blue water photo uh we think is uh hopefully the best place to get your underwater photo gear worldwide Blue Water Travel is uh, where everyone we know books their individual, private, or group-guided uh, dive travel. And the Underwater Photography Guide is uh, the world's first website to under offer free underwater photography tutorials online. And there's hundreds of them on there. So definitely, definitely check it out. Um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Raja Ampat. Mark, since you've been there the most, you want to give a little quick uh, intro about uh, about Raja and why it's uh, uh, why visit it? Sure. Actually, I don't like it at all there, but for some <laughs> reason, I keep going back. You know, it's uh, I, I think we're all subject to the allure of the the, the latest, greatest, uh, you know, emerging destinations, and I'm I'm the same as everyone else that way. But there are those places that are just so great that uh, you know, time after time, I find myself making plans to go back to Raja Ampat and uh, for plenty of good reasons. In particular, uh, I, I love biodiversity. The more different kinds of fish and critters, the better. And there is no better place in the world for that than Raja Ampat. Doesn't uh, one site have like 400 different fish species? In fact, it does. Uh, some, something like that. I don't remember the a exact lot. number. Yeah, but, uh, that is, uh, Dr. Jerry Allen broke his own previous record. It was back in the 200s when he first started doing that. And uh, every few years, he eclipses his previous record. And that is at Cree oh, Island, Cree. which is right in uh, the center of some of the best diving. And uh, there's uh, a couple excellent uh, land-based resorts right there. And uh, it is also, of course, a frequent stop by the uh, the various liveaboards. But uh, he counted, I believe it was at least up into the, the 300s or so, but it, it amounted to a new species observed roughly every five seconds. Of it's the a dive. fish load of fish. A fish load <laughs> of fish, for sure. Uh, and indeed, not only just more different types of fish than you can uh, possibly count, but uh, invertebrates as well. It is the world's greatest marine biodiversity by far more different species Definitely. of fish and coral and crustaceans and so something new around the corner all the time i was just blown away by the amount of fish i mean small big fish like most dives just had massive amounts compared to really anywhere else in in, in the world bj what did, what did as you well think as, as well as huge schools of fish too if you want to see lots of schooling fish there's great opportunities to see uh, I, I recall in a particular dive out there near cree where um, we saw at least four or five different schools of fish from oh, yeah, barracudas to time, bat, bat fish to jacks all in the same. Yes. Yeah, so all at the same time, just a panorama of huge schools of fish. It was just amazing. Um, as Mark mentioned, the biodiversity is just incredible. Um, more invertebrates than you'll find anywhere. Um, macro photography is amazing. Lots of nudibranchs and a lot of small critters and you also have a lot of large uh things too and they have manta rays, manta rays wabagongs, well. yeah. which is a, a huge shark that lays on the bottom yeah. that 
And then um, the walking shark, which is endemic to the area there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so great, they have mangroves, yeah. which are, are really, that's uh, what's in this photo here. Oh, the on blue the, on this slide is uh, blue water mangroves are really, really cool. Um, right. You see a lot of cool juvenile fish there that you won't see anywhere anywhere else, like the archer fish spitting and killing yeah. insects. That really is a unique feature of Raja Ampat. There are a lot of places in the world with mangroves, but few, if any, other places with clear blue water surrounding those mangroves, and nowhere else that I know of with clear blue water and mangroves and healthy hard coral all together in the same place. It's a, it's an amazing combination of quite rare habitats. And also, as Scott was mentioning, the nursery ground for all kinds of juvenile critters and yeah. uh, an amazing place. And um, we Blue Water Travel books a lot of our customers on their own individual, private, one, two, three people to Raja Ampat. We know it really well. Um, we also are running some photo workshops. Uh, I just ran one a couple of years ago. Um, Vijay is, is running one uh, next Christmas, Christmas of 2016. 2016. On a liveaboard, we'll talk more about that later. And Mark is running one uh, in early December of 2017 that we'll, we'll book very, very soon. So don't, don't, don't wait too long. Um, don't wait too long for these trips. Um, should we, should we get, get into some more photos, Marine Life? Of, sure, sure. Okay. Of Raja? Um, when to go, when to go. I, I basically, you want to avoid, avoid the, July, August. I think any any time else is Around pretty good. Time, yeah. Avoid our summer. Our summer, yes. I mean, not all of our, not all of our <laughs> listeners are in the northern hemisphere. True. So, um, you know, you want to avoid that July, August can get a little rough. I mean, not always. If you happen to be there, go. But if it's like a big trip, you know, you're planning it. You can go any time. Um, fall is great. Spring is great. Winter is great. Um, all those times. Um, yeah. Yep. And uh, even, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even necessarily rule out, uh, you know, July, August and so on for the land based uh, resorts. Uh, in many cases, you know, they have nearby reefs that are as good as anything that's more distant. So, um, you know, probably not the ideal time of year, but uh, I wouldn't rule it out either. Uh, quite often there is a silver lining there with, you know, fewer boats, less crowds and, um, you know, yeah. shy marine life that doesn't like to be around, you know, bigger numbers of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind a little bit of, of, of rain and a little bit of rough weather, all the, the resorts have um, a lot of great local dive sites. So you could totally go there in, in the summertime and, um, and probably have a, a great time. The water's always warm, um, low 80s. So um, I can attest to that. I'm the world's biggest wimp when it comes to water temperature. There, uh, I'm seldom not cold, even in the tropics. Raja Ampat, I think, is the only place I've ever been where I, I can't remember shivering even once. And, um, you know, visibility is, is, is good. Um, you're, it's not, it's not going to be a hundred foot vis. It's, it's, you have plankton the, in the water. That's what yeah, the trade off. Food. Yeah. I was just going to mention the trade off is because of that, um, lowered visibility is generally because of the plankton. There's so much more marine life that's feeding on it. So, um, with that little bit lesser of visibility, you do have just an incredible amount of, uh, of, of abundance of marine life in that area. So, um, but I would, yeah, I would, if I'm going there, I would dress for about 82, assume around 82 degrees, pretty much any time you're there. Um, where is Raja Ampat? Some, it's, it's in Indonesia, and it's also on the, the island of, of, of Papua New Guinea. So Papua New Guinea actually is split in half. The west half is owned by Indonesia. Uh, it's also known as the state of Irian Jaya. And the other half is part of the country of Papua New Guinea. Um, but it's 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 in it's on the island the of Papua New, New Guinea. Guinea. Um, or just just to the west of well, not actually offshore um, offshore. Yeah. Um, but you usually fly into the um, a place called Sorong, which is in a province called Papua. Um, it's quite remote. Um, I used to think it was like really hard to get to. It took days. It was awful to travel to. And when I went, I didn't think it was bad yeah. at all. It was a lot easier than than it was it was made out to be. Um, but then again, I did do a, a, a super secret route planning that if anyone wants to know, you'll have to email me about <laughs> and we'll talk about it. Um, but you can see on the on the map, the little red dots. Um, 
basically Indonesia is a big place. It has a lot of islands. So some people come from, from Singapore, Jakarta, Bali, Sulawesi, but eventually you have to make your way over to that east side of, of, of Indonesia. And, um, and, and then there's, um, there's a, a bunch of islands, but Raja Ampat, pretty much most routes will just call it the north and the south. They'll say Sarong and Mizul. Um, if you're at a resort, you'll only be diving one of the two. And if you're on a liveaboard, you'll usually be diving north and south. It's called um, Sorong Mizul. Um, both areas are great, but if you only happen to dive one area, you're really not missing out because both areas have, have everything. So um, I, I, it's nice to dive both, but I don't think it's a must. I think you can still see everything if you only, if you only go to one, one half of that that area and you're going to want to come back for the other half anyway so <laughs> yeah yeah very true but yeah four large islands and about 600 smaller ones all right around or just south of the equator so very warm and tropical um and once you make it to the indonesia area it's 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 relatively short flight to sarong uh jakarta to sarong is four hours i think it's like one and a half or two hours from uh from manado um there's another island uh that has an airport called makassar uh that a lot of people fly through that's about three and a half hours um which which airports have you guys usually through? I've used all the above oh, yeah. yeah i did um uh, through uh singapore to manado to sarong yeah, it's it's actually quite quite popular to um, to stop in Lembe for a few days, um, and we put together a lot of of great packages with great connections for people to stop in Lembe and then go to Russia. It's a um, nice combination. We actually yeah. have some great great deals we can offer for that. And if you're interested, just, just uh, shoot us a line. You can also transit through Bali, which is great because you have a lot of uh, activity there too, as well in Bali. Um. Mark, do you want to talk about some of the um, some of the areas on this? Uh, sure. Uh, this let's map. just real quick uh, mention uh, along the lines of possibly building in uh, stops at either Lembe or Bali along the way. Not only makes sense logistically, but I would also say uh, both of those destinations are a perfect complement to Raja Ampat in terms of scenery and marine life as well. Uh, you know, each could be considered a very well-rounded destination in itself. But uh, the real highlights for Lembe and in many cases for Bali too, uh, you know, critters on a black sand or dark sand bottom is probably one of the very few things that you don't see uh, in Racha Ampat and vice versa. So again, they, they complement each other very well. Uh, from just looking at the, the chart here, I can't quite read the writing, but uh, indeed you can see four large yeah, islands so here. Wrong here uh, and then Right, Sarong is, uh, is indeed sort of the gateway. That's where you fly into. Uh, you're there met by either your liveaboard boat, if that's how you're traveling, or by a uh, transfer boat to one of the land-based resorts. And then you'll be spending your time out amongst the islands of Raja Ampat, which means four kings, by the way. Uh, the four main islands, many, many smaller ones. Uh, you can see Masul down to the south kind of there all by itself. Uh, but there are many, many uh, nearby smaller islands as well. So it's certainly not just one big island. It's a whole maze of islands. And same thing in the north as well, uh, including uh, Dampier Strait, which is another justifiably famous dive area uh, and uh, surrounded by several large islands, many smaller ones there. What you have here is a kind of a unique uh, geographic and um, natural mix of uh, two different oceans, many different types of bottom structures, varying depths from very deep to very shallow, many different sort of micro habitats and different environments, all kind of jammed together in a very small area. And that has a great deal to do with the tremendous biodiversity that you see here. Great diversity in habitats lends itself to a great diversity of creatures. And so you can be sure that, and even if you only dive kind of one area, uh, you, you know, you're not going to run out of things to see. In fact, uh, diversity and variety is really what it's all about in, in Raja Ampat. Every dive, you'll see something new. No question about it. Yeah, that's how I felt. Um, Even topside is very um, beautiful, too, as well. It's kind of like rock islands, like Palau. Um, those granite type. Very uh, green. Uh, yes, green very green, green and lush. And yes, very, very beautiful islands around. So 
Yeah, very. It's a good comparison with the Rock Islands of Palau because they are the, the very similar structures. Many of them shaped almost like mushrooms. So you can swim around the the underwater portion is actually much smaller diameter than uh, yeah. at the waterline. And I mentioned granite. I meant limestone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's look at some uh, just some 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 photos from from Raja. Um, I think one thing one thing you notice about Raja is there's a lot of big big corals and and sponges and corals on top of corals that have fish just spiraling spiraling around them and you see that everything's a lot. fighting for space there mm. all the corals are all fighting yeah. for space it's just Absolutely. so lush and, and and dense um when i went to rajampad i i use my my white angle most of the time although you can easily shoot macro the whole time too and that really allows you to get get close to uh close to these corals and try to bring out the the best possible possible colors. Um, there's a lot of soft corals too, even even more so in the in the south around the Measle area. Just some of the sites just had had so many colors, and they have them in the in the in the north too. Um, but um, some huge huge hard corals, almost almost everywhere, every site. It was it was really something. Um, there's the schools of fish, EJ, you're talking <laughs> about certainly. Um, yeah, uh, virtually every dive site, it, it's quite common to be just surrounded by fish. And uh, it could be snappers, as we're seeing here. There are some of the most cooperative sweet lips that I've seen anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And just huge walls of sweet lips just kind of hovering right there in the current yeah. or kind of wrapping themselves around a coral head. Not at all unusual for squadrons of big bump head parrotfish to come cruising through the middle <laughs> of the scene. Um, also, other bigger animals. Again, uh, uh, Scott mentioned uh, wabigong sharks, which is mm -hmm. it's quite unusual to see in tropical places. Uh, for the most most of those species are down in the colder waters in uh, South Australia and so on, and yet they are uh, quite common in Raja Ampat. Very good chance of encountering them. Uh, for certain sites, uh, mantas are also almost guaranteed. I hate to use the word guaranteed in nature because <laughs> they're not, but uh, there's a very high likelihood though. and, yeah. and uh, quite often multiple mantas either swimming up to be cleaned or just kind of cruising around, but a very good possibility for mantas as well. And it is also the kind of place where almost anything else can and probably will come along. Whale sharks are not unusual, marine mammals as well, uh, mobula rays, uh, you name it, uh, it, it either lives there or travels through there and uh, plenty of reef sharks and so on as well. Uh, there, you know, we saw a lot of small white tips under under rocks, under those big table corals. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it, many places in the world, sadly, sharks are still very much in decline or, or threatened. Uh, and that's not to say that uh, all is perfect in Raja Ampat either, but it really is, in many ways, one of the success stories of marine conservation. For once, instead of uh, declaring it protected after it's too late. Uh, in Raja Ampat, the, uh, luckily, the uh, conservation groups and world's marine scientists recognize early on what a very special place this is and uh, move quickly to take measures to protect it. And that has been fully embraced by the Indonesian government and most importantly by the local people in Raja Ampat. There's no, uh, six, uh, no uh, conservation program can really succeed without their help and that the local people are very much supportive of uh, marine conservation. Also, by simply by visiting there as divers, we are doing our part. That is that is what's critical in keeping it that way. So you can not only have an awesome time, but feel good about doing something good for the ocean while you're at it. This this school of um, grunts reminds me, it was at one of the, the key dive sites, Cape Cree, where the boats usually put you in the middle of these two currents coming up. So you can sort of sit there in between the currents and be pretty stable. And you have all these big schools of grunts and snappers on, on both sides of you. And then, um, like Mark said, a lot of, of reef sharks will be swimming swimming through. And every few minutes, you'll see a, uh, a black tip or white tip reef shark um, swim by. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome to see. Um, in fact, I remember on the very first dive site I did in, in Raja, we dropped in the water. There was a huge school of, of batfish mm. uh, sitting there in front. And then looking up, there was right next to it was a big school of barracuda. Nice. And... Um, that was sort of indicative of not just, you know, some destinations have that of one or two of the dive sites on the trip. But I say Raja, it's the, it's the majority. majority. Um, mm. Quite a number of turtles there. Here's a, a, a wabagong shark uh, swimming over, uh, about to swim over a diver. Um, <laughs> a 
uh, there's a lot of wabagong sharks there. Um, good number of, uh, of a couple of manta cleaning stations um, with very reliable, big, large mantas. Um, I know sometimes we'll see them on the surface too from the dinghy and we'll dive in and snorkel with them. Um, this one site had maybe five or six huge lionfish hunting, just hunting in the open water, not being afraid, trying to hide. And that was, that was really cool to see. Um, you guys have said you've seen the, the walking shark? Yes, in yeah, fact, uh, that's one of um, many endemic uh, species that are found nowhere else in the world, the, uh, the racha epaulette shark or walking shark. And as the name implies, it, although it can swim, he's much more comfortable <laughs> just walking around on his fins. And uh, when I was there, one of the most reliable places to see them was right up in about two feet of water, right up next to the creek eco lodge over the seagrass. Cool. <laughs> Um, again, here's a huge coral head, and there's just lots of these. You see them everywhere where there's just so much life st stuffed on them. And a lot of times you'll be on these coral heads, and there'll be a current and a million fish swimming over you, and then you'll have like a manta ray swim over or, or something like that. It's, it's pretty awesome. There's uh, You can see one of the bump head parrot fish. You can see all the soft corals. This is indicative of, of one of the dive sites in the in the measles area. Um, it's actually, this is a site called Boo Windows. Boo Windows? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you guys have been there. Yeah, mm -hmm. an amazing uh, site. I wish I had a bump head from there. That probably the very same rock formation as well. <laughs> um, um, Pygmy seahorse capital of the world. Crazy yeah. number of pygmies, <laughs> I was really surprised. Yeah, yeah. And not only number, but variety, so yeah, the, size. Exactly. Um, yeah, even, even I can I've find them on my own. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the um, the guys are all pretty good at finding them, and there's like there's three different species too, at least. Yeah, possibly more. There's more, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but you know, three different species I was seeing regularly. Yeah. Um, uh, and not only just in not only just in sea fans, so um, uh, and sea snakes and pretty much any any Indo-Pacific creature you want. Um, let's see what else we got. Here we go. We have some, uh, I think this is, uh, these are some photos I took on my very first dive site in Raja Ampat. There's the bat fish I was talking about in the nearby right overhead were the barracuda. And um, nice welcoming committee. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice welcoming committee. Um some squid, a lot of a lot of big cuttlefish. Like I said, a lot of big lionfish. Large schools of of sardines. Um, uh, one of my favorite sites is a, is a site called uh, Arboric Pier or Arboric Jetty. Um, there's all these small creatures that come on at night and during the the day. You get some. You get all this. The sun coming through the beams and some awesome mm, through the pier, and then schooling fish underneath it. Yeah, schooling fish. It's Silver really soft. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the most probably most photographed jetties in the world, actually. Yeah. Um, so, just to to wrap up the marine life, it, it from marine life and diversity, it doesn't and and just quantity, it doesn't really get much better than than Raja. Um, you have warm water. Um, fairly good visibility, although it can, you know, it can sometimes just be okay. There's times that it hasn't been great. So you just have to keep that in mind. It's hard to predict. It can just, it can just come and go depending on the amount of plankton in the water. Um, but in terms of fish and, and coral and nudibranchs too, there's so many nudibranch species, mm -hmm. um, Macro shooters could shoot nudibranchs and pygmies and um, and some small fish all day. They do have muck sites. I, I for my trip, I chose this to have our boat skip the muck sites so we can do them in, in other yeah, dedicated so rel muck trips. Relatively little in the way of true muck. There's a, a lot of the same critters that you would see in mucky sites, but not necessarily in the muck. Which for me, if you're, I, I, I would rather do a skip those and do a mm -hmm. dedicated um, critter trip. In uh, you know, in the Philippines or in Lembe or Bali um, or Ambon, um, but if if you're only going to get to Indonesia once in the next few years, then you could you could probably just see everything. You can see everything. 
Um, uh, I, I want to talk a minute for about resorts and liveaboards. Um, our staff has has been on the vast majority of the boats and the resorts in Raja. So if you have specific questions about what's best for you, you want this amenity, you don't want that, definitely talk to us because the chances are one of us have, has been there personally recently. Um, I think, you know, probably 10, 15 of the resorts and boats collectively, we've, we've, we've all been on between the three of us and a couple other people who, who aren't here today. Um, Liveaboard is, is, is great because you can cover a wide area, although I will say that the, the resorts are all located in the areas of best diving. And the advantage is that the guides at the resorts, they, they know the sites really well. Um, they know the tides really well. And I, I really, after going there on a the liveaboard and, and people not knowing it as well, I really appreciate and then heard, you know, feedback from people who stay at the resorts, I really started to appreciate that difference. So now I, I, I feel like you can have a really good time resort or liveaboard based where I think a couple of years ago, I was mainly telling people, oh, just do the liveaboard. And now um, I don't feel that way. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree. I'm normally very liveaboard oriented. If given a choice, I'll almost always go for the liveaboard. I would be, for Raja Ampat, I would be equally torn. There's there's plenty mm -hmm. of reasons to go either, either way, just as Scott mentioned. Uh, you know, you can have a very well-rounded, excellent experience, either liveaboard or, or land-based. And, and the, the resort, well, the resort and the liveaboard selection in Raja, I feel like is really great. I mean, in some places, there's maybe some resorts, liveaboards, I, I don't recommend that aren't that good. But in Raja, all, all the ones are, are really high quality. And they, I think in Raja, they have to be or else or else they wouldn't they wouldn't make it. It wouldn't make it. It's been, uh, I think, another measure of just how exceptional the diving is in Raja Ampat. It has gone from being, uh, you know, an, an <laughs> almost unknown place not that many years it's ago, with a, maybe one, one or two, two resorts, boards, one or two resorts, yeah. to just exploded in popularity. <laughs> Fortunately, though, it is a huge area. So even yeah. with, I think, last count, something like forty liveaboards and uh, it probably uh, maybe a dozen uh, resorts scattered around. Uh, it is not still, crowded yeah, at all. You can yeah. still be in areas and you won't see other people around. Right. You can still, yeah. Um, not crowded at all. I When I first heard 40 boats, I'm like, wow, we only, on my last trip, I only saw a couple other boats rarely. I mean, it was, it's uncrowded. Yeah. It's very, very uncrowded. And not all those 40 are there. In fact, most of them are not there year round either, yeah. and their their schedules are not yeah. all exactly the same. But if you have questions about specific resorts, contact us because we've been to most of these places fairly recently. Uh, I'll go through some of them real quick. Uh, Crete Eco Resort is um, is a little costs a little less than some of the other resorts. It's it's a little more basic. It's the same owner as Cerrito Bay Resort. Um, this is one of the first resorts in Raja Ampat, yes. too, yeah, so they have a lot yeah. of experience in the area there, too, as well. Exactly. Incredibly experienced, and the location is – you can't get any better than being right on, on yeah. Cree. You have so many – the all the best dive sites are within, like, 10 minutes. Sardine Reef and Cape Cree. And, yeah. yeah, Mike's yeah. Point, awesome area. Manta's. Um, Mandarin fish right at the end of the dock. So. <laughs> yeah, Mandarin fish at the docks. Um and you know the rooms are nice, the food is good. Um, you just don't have necessarily a lot of the amenities. A little bit more like camping than some of the some of the other places. It doesn't uh, necessarily. Maybe it was low tide there, but this particular photo example, uh, it looks like the bungalow is kind of out of the water. But one of the really cool things about the Kriyuko Resort is that um, most of the units are actually out over the water. So in the, in the shallow water up on silt. So yeah, it's kind of a kind of like being at sea in your bungalow. Yeah. Um, Cerrito Bay Resort, same owner as Cree Eco, is located on the same island. Um, very upscale, um, top notch food, very nice rooms, rooms right on the water, um, AC in the rooms. This is, um, this is the, the high end choice um, in the north, in the Sarong area. Um, so you will, uh, you will be very spoiled there. Yeah. Dedicated camera um, room. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing um, if you're able to spend a little more money. Although, it's it's still not as much really um, 
as some of the, the liveaboards. Mm -hmm. um, it's still a little less, but you're having top-notch comfort at, at Cerrito Bay. It's it's really incredible. And uh, I might also mention if you're at either of these resorts and the owner, Max Hammer, is around, by all means, uh, corner him and, and get him to tell you a few of his stories because he's got <laughs> plenty of them. He is one of the, the original pioneers of the region there and has led a, a very interesting life as a result of that. Um, there's also, um, a couple other, other resorts that, um, that we've stayed at recently that are, are exceptional. And, and, and I know the owners of both one is, is Papua paradise. And one of them is called Papua explorers. Um, the name sounds similar, but they're, they both have different plus and minuses. They're, they're both mid range, um, really nice rooms right on the water. Um, great staff, great diving, um, they cost a little more than, than Cree, but not as much as, as Cerrito. Um, and they're, they're also really, really popular choices. Um, Papua Paradise and Papua Explorers. Um, there's also, like I said, a lot of, of, of liveaboards. Um, uh, the SMY Andina is uh, is a is a nice solid mid range uh, mid range liveaboard. It costs a little less than than some of the other ones, but it's a very solid experience boat. Um, and as as I go through these, if you guys have, have been on a particular mm -hmm. boat, please chime in. Um, um, and it's uh, it's 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 very roomy, and and the crew always gets great great feedback. Um, um, another uh, really nice high-end resort, Mizul Eco Resort, is located in the south. Top-notch resort. You will have the most amazing stay. Very you beautiful resort. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's right in a lagoon there. There's a very shallow lagoon where all the uh, rooms are set right around it. And uh, a lot of times you have uh, juvenile sharks swimming through in the lagoon, all the white tips. Like literally right under right, where right you're under, sleeping. Yes, exactly. Right under you, right so under you your sit room. on your patio and you can see these little juvenile yeah. sharks swimming yeah, around awesome. in the lagoon. It's just really gorgeous. And you can climb up on top of the uh, the hill there and have just this expansive, just beautiful view across uh, through around the Missoula area there. It's just a really, really great resort. Um, so, yeah, you can see in the picture here the um, – the rooms are right on the water and there's there's a lot of marine life like literally um right outside your window at Mizul and all the top dive sites in, in the south are, are very close to the resort um it's uh that was some of my some of my favorite diving on my on my trip was around Mizul and I can't I can't wait to go back there again um Another liveaboard, uh, the Dewey New Centara, is, is a very nice high-end liveaboard, um, luxury, top-notch crew, food, immaculate rooms. Um, this is the kind of, of boat where you will be pampered. You will have no complaints. Um, you know, it's, in, it's in, the, in the upper price range, but um, a lot of my, my friends have been on the, on the boat, and, and they just they just love it an absolute um, great experience on the on the Dewey um, and uh, the, the the rooms are amazing the diving the dive dining is um, you know you'll feel you feel like you're in a nice high-end restaurant and the boat is really roomy um, it is quite amazing um, the Indo siren um, Great boat. I was on that that boat. The rooms are 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 big, really comfortable. They have like twenty four by seven espresso machines and and Nutella and and the best dive deck. And uh, I really uh, I really like the 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 Siren boat. Um, and and they let me arrange a custom itinerary, which was really nice. Where we got to do a little bit more in the Blue Mangroves and a little bit more time at Arboric Jetty. So. Um, yeah, I've not been on the actual Indo Siren, but I've been on a, a number of other Siren fleet vessels, and I can certainly uh, attest to the the quality of the organization, the Siren fleet <clears throat> as a whole. Uh, I, I think their their uh, success speaks volumes about they they've just in a short number of years. You see uh, Siren boats popping up in all corners of the world, but they've got a, a very successful formula, a, a really dedicated 
team and uh, you know they, they believe in top quality and mm -hmm. do whatever it takes to uh, to provide that for their guests. BJ's trip is going to be on the, the Raja Ampat Aggressor, which uh, until a week ago was known as the Ocean Rover. And Mark was actually the cruise director on the Ocean yep. Rover for quite Indeed. a long time. The original cruise director. And for a long time, the Ocean Rover had the reputation as the best liveaboard in the world. The best. Um, maybe you can you can talk about that. It is. Well, physically first of all, personally. maybe not the most uh, aesthetically beautiful boat to look at uh, from the surface. But once you get on board, uh, uh, top quality throughout. Uh, absolutely uh, no holds barred in terms of, uh, you know, the sturdiest, best, most seaworthy materials and design. It's one of the very few uh, liveaboards that is built to kind of world standards in terms of safety. Um, it's got tremendous range. Um, uh, it's also, uh, uh, in terms of, again, in terms of safety, uh, all the most modern equipment, also very wide, stable, comfortable boat. Mm -hmm. The dive deck is, uh, I think the envy of the industry, huge dive deck, plenty of personal space, not only for your dive gear, but giant camera tables, multi-tiered <laughs> camera tables that your camera's not going to slide off of, even when there's big <laughs> waves, two giant rinse tanks. Uh, and you, you could easily uh, park, you know, all the camera gear for a full on expedition just on the camera tables and the dive deck. But there's another interior camera room as well. And this is the only part of the boat that I had any say in. But obviously, yeah. that's my priority. And your trip is going to be on the uh, the Demai. On the Demai, another one of my very favorite vessels. Which very is different one of the vessel, most but... luxurious boats in the world. Only Absolutely. 12 divers, right? Absolutely. And the room is like the size, each room is the size of a mansion. There, right? It's <laughs> embarrassingly nice in terms of the size and, and quality of the rooms and amenities. Uh, absolutely top-notch, dedicated crew. One of the, uh, the, the real uh, great points of the Demai is the very low guest to crew ratio so very personalized service uh, i do have to warn you though you will be spoiled after you're getting treated that way it's kind of hard to go back to diving with your buddies back home and it's time to put on your wetsuit and you put your arms out because normally someone helps you into and out of your wetsuit doesn't happen so much with your buddies <laughs> but uh there's someone there to to help at every turn uh, on the demai and uh, they also specialize in flexible schedules because the groups are smaller uh, they can uh, more easily cater to individual interests in terms of timing and meals and diving preferences uh, a very customized high-end trip all the way across the board and uh, they also believe very much in the all-inclusive approach so unlike some operations you don't get an unpleasant surprise at the end of the trip like oh yeah well there are all these various fees and extra charges I know your so trip on. includes even massages and nitrox and equipment and everything. Yeah. All inclusive. Alcohol, super all inclusive. That's really nice. And um, you can like have the guests get their own like private guide, right? Like they have yep. so many guys on that boat for like only 12 it's divers. Incredible. It's crazy. Um, we do have exclusive specials, um, exclusive specials we can offer for every resort and live aboard we've mentioned today. Um, just email us for details just to. Um, this is only for webinar participants, people who are on live right now. Um, just to highlight a couple of them, um, uh, Mizul Eco Resort, um, one of the top resorts in the world. We have a, a gift certificate uh, we can give you um, for, uh, for Mizul Eco. Um, we have uh, some specials for individuals and some, some small groups uh, on the SMY Andina. Um, uh, and also some nitrox, free nitrox specials only for people um, on the on this listening to this webinar. Um, the Dewey New Centara, we have some special prices um, on uh, on most of the dates uh, in 2016. So if you want a really nice high end trip on the Dewey, uh, you can contact us about that. Um, we have some great specials. Um, on all um, all the siren trips, including uh, 10% off uh, the bookings for for this summer. Uh, um, Cree uh, Eco and Cerrito, um, we have a number of specials we can offer you at this resort, um, including um, a very special price at Cerrito Bay, 10% off your booking, um, some solo diver specials. So. Again, contact us, us for more info, and we'll make sure we get you better than the best possible price um, at uh, at any of the places mentioned 
mentioned on this, uh, we will we will get you um, uh, a great deal. Um, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a Q and A session in a second. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can either email me Scott at BlueWaterDiveTravel.com or Mark at BlueWaterPhotoStore.com or VJ at BlueWaterPhotoStore.com. Um, don't hesitate to ask any questions about the, the trips. They were just announced, so there's a lot of rooms, a lot of uh, prime cabins available. But I, I suspect in a couple months that situation will be very different. So if you book now, small deposit, you'll have a really nice trip to look to look forward to. Um, uh, again, VJ's trip is December 22nd to January 1st at the end of next year over Christmas and, and New Year's. Year. And on that boat, the, the, the prices is, is, is really fantastic. You're never going to see a price again that low on, on, on this boat for, uh, for a 10-day Raja trip. Yeah, um, Terry is going to be hitting a lot of really amazing places, too. A lot of the places that I've been to before, and I'm okay. really excited to go back and dive those places again. Are you going to offer the guest uh, photo instruction? Yes, definitely. Board? Cool. Definitely. <laughs> um, By the way, one, and, uh, one little detail about uh, the boat that uh, – the VJ's uh, leading the trip on uh, that is, uh, I think, among the very few of the boards where uh, the, the cabins are not only all spacious uh, and well appointed, but they all have a nice picture window view. There are no below decks cabins that are snuggled away where you have just a porthole or something. Um, so um, should we do the um, Adam, do you want to make us larger for the Q&A session? Great, great. <clears throat> Um, uh, if anyone has any, any questions, I, I see a few that people have typed in, so we're going to answer them now. Um, feel free to, uh, to type in your, your, your own questions. Um, let me, uh, start at the top. We already addressed temperature, which is probably around 82 all year round. Um, as you know, there's, um, there's a lot of manta rays there. I'm not really known for whales you haven't seen any whales in Russia, have you once it's once. not famous okay. for them but it's, it's, it's very it's quite there. rare um do you know where the nearest decompression chamber is off the top of your head uh, far away probably monado far I it's it's, it's, it's far um you know but uh the diving there is all multi-level a lot of people do nitrox so it's usually not my locations where I hear about people having dive accidents or getting bent. I mean, it can happen anywhere, but I think it's it's more likely other places. Um, uh, the the flight to get there um, again, you want to get to Singapore or or Indonesia or or Bali, which is going to take various amounts of time depending on on where you're flying from. And if you uh, let us know where you're flying from, we can give you an exact exact number but once you're in that area you know another three or four hours and you're you're there um and your your vacation has has begun so um you know i give yourself one usually we have people do you know whether it's for six hours or for a couple of days some sort of of little sleepover hotel night or stopover in singapore lembe bali or jakarta one of those places and, and we can definitely figure out what's what's right for you um someone was asking uh, about the diving pressure and i'd say given how big that area is it's not a lot of diving pressure I don't no think. i i think that's the, the least of the of the concerns here um regina was asking about how full the liveaboard trips are these two new ones we, we just announced so like i said they're pretty open um uh, Bruce was uh, asking some detailed questions about Cree in the rooms. And Bruce, why don't we, we follow up? Uh, let me double check about the rooms in Cree, and, and I'll, I'll follow up with you. Um, we'll follow up with you personally. Um, uh, one of our uh, friends, John, was asking, uh, comparing Raja Ampat to Wakatobi. I could, I could answer that. Um, <clears throat> Wakatobi is really phenomenal for its coral growth. Um, very, very lush corals, uh, great wall diving, um, and, and really great uh, small um, uh, 
uh, reef fish and that type of thing. What I think that um, Wakatobi is lacking that Raja Ampat does have is a huge schooling fish, um, like um, and, and also the larger fish like the manta rays and so forth, and also just um, much more much more diversity than than Wakatobi. There's just so much that you can see there in Raja Ampat. I think that it's uh, definitely kicked up a notch. Mm. Uh, Wakatobi is phenomenal. There's great diving there, but I think that the variety that you have in Raja John Putz. Uh, I, I would agree, and I would say one more factor, color, at least to my eye, and not that Wakatobi is lacking in color, nope. but that Raja Ampat is exceptionally colorful with a full spectrum of soft corals, especially in the yeah, south. Especially, the yes, Missoula. exactly, in Missoula. Yeah. Um, uh, question from Ron. He was asking about uh, um, combining uh, land and liveaboard trips into one. Um, I'm not sure if he's talking about land diving or not diving. Um, but I know you can, you can, um, you can definitely do a, a liveaboard trip and then, and then stay at a resort mm -hmm. easily. Um, it's actually one of my favorite combinations. It's what I usually try to do. And, <laughs> and you get, you know, uh, kind of the best of both worlds that way. So it can work very well. Um, and, uh, Ron also asked, where do you take those photos of the village jetties full of soft corals and schooling fish? I, I think I know the, the photos Ron's talking about. There's a couple of contest winners. Um, those are all taken at Upwork Jetty, um, with the soft corals on the pier. And then, uh, you just have to be lucky and have the fish in the pier yeah. and the sun at the right, at the right and angle. And a bit of <clears throat> for the soft corals. Yeah, and a bit of current for the for the soft corals. Um, uh, any other questions, Adam? That uh, you think we we missed, or otherwise, um, I think we can we can wrap up. Yeah, I think that's I think that's basically all. Of them. All right, great. Well, everyone, thanks a lot for viewing the uh, the presentation. I hope that was helpful. And again, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us with any other other thoughts about or questions about the the trips. Um, uh, we've organized a lot of Raja trips and it will never ever cost you uh, anything to use blue water for travel. So thanks a lot, Vijay and Mark. Thanks. All right. Thanks Our a lot. Pleasure. Thanks everyone.